We, my friends, are living in the data information age, and it all starts with some basic terms and definitions. And I'm going to explain them to you here. Let's go. Give me six minutes, and I'll teach you something new. Now, let's get to work. Hi, it's Mark from Six Minute Statistics. I want to take six minutes to go through the basic terms and definitions that are necessary for any type of analysis, whether you're doing something simple or something incredibly complex. These terms are going to help you understand things better. Let's start with the definition of statistics. My favorite author defines statistics as the science of collecting, classifying, summarizing, organizing, analyzing, and interpreting numerical and categorical information. There is a lot there. Basically, what it's saying is statistics is all things data. From collecting the information in, to taking a look at it and turning it around and looking at it from various directions, to coming up with different tools and techniques to analyze the data, and ultimately to being able to interpret the results and get some meaningful information that will help you make better decisions. All of that falls under the umbrella of statistics. There are two main things we do with statistics. We refer to them as the two applications or branches of statistics. Sometimes we take the data that we're working with or that we have, that we've collected, and we describe it. We can use some graphical techniques or some numerical techniques. I'll take a look at both of these in future videos. Anything that's describing the data that we have is referred to as descriptive statistics. If we take the data we have and then project that information onto a larger group, that's referred to as inferential statistics. Both are necessary and they have their time and place, and we'll talk about both those applications in future videos. There are five basic terms or elements of statistics that I want to cover with you in this video. The first is a definition of a population. Now, most of you probably think a population is a group of people. It might be. But in statistics, a population is a group of data. In fact, it's the entire set of data we're interested in. It may be people. It may be automobiles. It may be states. It may be anything and everything. But the key with a population is it's the entire or the whole group of data that we want to learn about. We usually can't collect all that data. Time and money are limiting factors. And so when we can't collect the data that's in the population, we take data from some of that population and we call it a sample. A sample is a subset of the population that we've actually collected information from. So if the population is the whole, the sample is some. If I break it down further and talk about a single piece of data, that's referred to as the experimental unit. It's the object we measure to get a single piece of data. I work at a large public university, University of South Florida. There are 40,000 undergraduate students. That's a big population. It's hard to collect all that data. Maybe I collect data for 200 of those students. I'll call that my sample. And when I talk about the experimental unit, it's a single student. All, some, one. Population, sample, experimental unit. It's pretty easy to keep it straight. The things that I actually collect are called variables. So I may ask the student how many hours they're taking this semester. Or I might ask them what year in school are they? Or I might ask them their age, their gender. There's a whole host of questions I could ask the students. Are they full-time? Are they part-time? Those are referred to as variables, a characteristic or property of an experimental unit that can vary from one unit to the next. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible, and other people will go crazy and make this a little bit more complicated. I'm going to say there's two general types of variables. There's numerical data, which we call quantitative, things like the age, the GPA, the number of hours the students are taking. Anything that the student wants to give me a number for, we're going to call quantitative. And then there's the categories, the year in school, the gender, are they full-time or part-time? Anything that's a category is referred to as categorical or what we'll call qualitative variables. And I'm going to keep it simple and just say quantitative and qualitative. The last element of statistics that I want to talk about is a measure of reliability. This is a real important one. If I'm just working with the data I have, if I'm doing that descriptive statistics, and I say 32% of the students are freshmen, I'm 100% sure of that. That's a fact because I have the data in the sample. 32% of the observations I have in the sample do, in fact, have the category freshmen. If I want to, instead of talking about the sample, talk about the population of all students, I can't say 32% of my population of students are freshmen. 
That's just a guess. When we get to that point in inferential statistics, we'll express the measure of reliability as a confidence level or a measure of error. But that's much later. Let's end this video with an example. My favorite artist, of who you've seen a bunch of her artwork through this video, has asked for help with the analytics of her work. She's interested in learning about how long it takes her to complete a piece of art. Now, she's created thousands of pieces of artwork over the years, impossible to collect all that information, so I sampled 15 pieces and found the average time to complete those 15 pieces was 20 hours. Let's go through the definitions that we looked at in this video and see how they apply to this example. The 15 pieces of artwork that I actually collected information from, that's the part I have, that's the sample. That's not the group that she's interested in. She wants to learn about all pieces of artwork, and that's gonna be the population. So if all is the population, sum, the 15 is the sample, a single piece of artwork would be called the experimental unit. The thing that we're measuring in this case, the variable of interest, how long did it take her to complete it? Because she's gonna be telling me numbers like 15 hours or 30 hours or 22 hours, because it's a number, we're gonna say that that variable is quantitative. When I make the statement that the average time to complete the 15, the sampled artwork, was 20 hours, that's a descriptive statement. I'm talking about the data that I've collected, and I'm 100% sure of that, that's a fact. When I take those 15 pieces of art and try to make a statement about all the pieces of art she's ever created, that would be an inferential statement. And those are some things that we have to look forward to as we move forward. Now, take a look at these terms and see if you can own them yourself. It's time to get to work. So long.